Okay, so again, welcome everyone. And this week we are looking at the uh, lessons of the turtle. And this is the third lesson, which is the gift of the cloud. Now, Turtle, if you remember, had fallen down and landed on his back and was unable to move. From his new vantage point, he was able to see things differently and discovered the lesson of choice. That is that we choose our own way and then we take responsibility for making that choice. The following week, he learned the gift of the tree. And this is a lesson of honor, honoring who we are really, who we really are, and honoring our own unique path. Now, just as a tree is within the seed, who we are is within us, just, as, just waiting to be honored and released. And so today we're moving on to the gift of the clouds. So here's the dialogue between them. The story opens with Turtle having a conversation with Owl. And he says, I respect everyone who knows they have a special place in the universe. And I know I also have a special place on my feet. <laughs> have you thought of how to get me on the right side, Owl? The Owl responds, an idea will come, Turtle. But since you're upside down, you might as well keep your eyes open. There is more to learn. Have you noticed how problems do that for us? They get us to pay attention. Turtle says enthusiastically, I sure am seeing things differently. And I sure am seeing things I've never seen before. Like those white fluffy pups floating in the sky. What are they? You're looking at clouds, said Turtle. They're so high, Owl, can you fly that high? Looking up at the sky, he replies, no, I can't reach those clouds, but I can aim for them. And they inspire me to soar higher and higher. I wish I could fly to a cloud, said Turtle. Can you just imagine what it must be like on the clouds? Turtle, there is much I don't understand, but clouds help me to imagine. They remind me of beautiful dreams, dreams I may never reach, but something to aim for anyway. Tell me, Turtle, when you watch clouds, what do you see? Well, they keep changing, so it isn't an easy answer. I see a bird, then I see a fish, and then I see a turtle like me. That's right, Owl said. Clouds are forever changing, and so do dreams. What we imagine for ourselves today, what we dream of as time goes by, will change. So Turtle asks, so this is the gift of imagination then? And Owl answers, no, not exactly. A dream that is not acted upon is a daydream. We need to turn these dreams into affirmations. This is what makes dreams come true. When your dream becomes a belief, it will come to pass. That is the gift of the cloud, affirmation. Now, everyone here at Unity knows the, val the value of affirmations and affirmative prayer. Affirmative prayer is the foundation of the Unity teachings. The British philosopher James Allen said, the greatest achievements were at first and for time dreams. The oak sleeps in the acorn, the bird waits in the egg, and in the highest vision of the soul, a waking angel stirs. It all begins with a dream. So within the oak is the, within the oak tree lies within the acorn. Within that egg is the bird waiting to hatch. Our lives are the same. We hold this highest vision for ourselves to allow ourselves to come forth. Now, in order to make our dream a reality, we need to affirm it, believe it, and commit to it. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. It's one of the five principles. Clear vision is the first step to creating what we want. When we get clear in our vision, people and situations will show up that will assist us in fulfilling our dreams. It's very important that our attitudes and our behaviors be in alignment with the vision, with our vision, in order to make our dreams come true. 
Now, did you ever find yourself setting a goal and the next breath you say, oh, it can't be done, I can't do that? Have you ever done that? I know I did. <laughs> we work against ourselves when we say it can't be done. When we have something, when our soul speaks to us and wants to bring something forth, the very fact that it's coming to us means that spirit is there to support, support us in manifesting it. Mary Morrissey, the author of the Prosperity Plus program says, if I didn't think it was possible, if I didn't think it was impossible, what would I do? And that's the key. If we didn't think it was impossible, how would we behave? What would we do? What would we set our sights on? The truth is nothing is impossible. There's a writing by an anonymous author that says, let nothing hold you back from exploring your wildest dreams, wishes, and aspirations. Don't be afraid to dream big and to follow your dreams wherever they may lead you. Open your eyes to their beauty. Open your eyes to their magic. Open your heart to their possibilities. And I love that last line. Open your heart to the possibilities. Don't let anything hold you back. Affirm what you want, affirm your dreams, and then take action. Now, affirmations begin with the words, I am. John Mundy brought it out last week. I don't remember if it was during the talk of the workshop, but I am are two very powerful words. Everything we manifest begins with the words, I am. So when we begin our affirmations, we begin with the word, I am, and we speak to them in the present tense. Affirm that which is yours, even though it may describe the future. Now, affirmations work not because we're trying to convince ourselves of something that is untrue, but because we are speaking the truth about ourselves. I want to say that again. Affirmations are not about trying to convince us of, of something. Affirmations are to speak what is already true. Now, when we finally believe it, then we can manifest it. You know, you think about like a blueprint of a building. You don't tell the architect that he or she is foolish for believing in the blueprint. We build on an idea. We are the architect of our lives. When you affirm you are accepting the good that is waiting for you because it's yours by divine inheritance. So affirming is allowing. Affirming is stating to the universe that which we allow God's good into our life. Affirming is allowing the universe that which is ours already to come to us. Remember, God is good all the time and God only wants good for us. Affirma affirmations take that expectation of that good and locks it firmly in our mind. Now, was anybody familiar with Dot Richardson? Dot Richardson had a dream. Dot excelled at playing softball as a girl. Her dream was to play softball in the Olympics. When Dot was 15, she was offered a position on a professional women's softball team, but her dream was to be in the Olympics. At that time, softball wasn't even an Olympic sport. So she turned down that offer because professional players at that time were disqualified from competing in the Olympics. Dot went on to college, went on to medical school, keeping up with softball, even though she had a busy academic calendar. She began her medical career in 1992 when she was in her early 30s. She was past her prime. Softball still wasn't an Olympic sport, but she kept practicing and she kept uh, putting herself out there, practicing and preparing for the Olympics. Finally, in 1996, women's softball made it into the Olympics, and Dr. Richardson was ready. The 34-year-old athlete led the American women's team to win a gold medal. Now, how did that happen? She had a dream, and she remained focused 
believed in that dream, kept practicing regardless of what it said in the world. She let nothing deter, deter her and it came to fruition. Now like Dot, we all have the power through our words to transform our lives all the time. So I invite you to sit down, commit to your dream on paper, write it down. I affirmed that I was gonna be a spiritual leader of a unity center. I affirmed that I was gonna be licensed and ordained through unity. Finally, it came to pass. It was a long journey. It was a discouraging journey. I was ready to give up more than once, but I hung in there. And a lot of you, it was because a lot of your support kept me focused and kept me going. Now, the New Thought author, Emmett Fox said, as soon as the subconscious mind accepts any idea, it immediately begins trying to put it into effect. It uses all of its resources to that end. It uses every bit of knowledge that you have ever collected, most of which you have forgotten, to bring its purpose about. Now, basically, we need to have clear intent on what we want. We need to be very clear about what we want. And again, as Emmett said, as soon as the subconscious mind accepts any idea, it immediately begins trying to put it into effect. So we need to be clear. My first metaphysical teacher used to emphasize all the time the importance of clear intent. He would say over and over, you must have clear intent, clear intent, and that it be good for all involved. And with that, you can manifest. Now, we all know Liberace, right? We're all familiar with Liberace. Well, in the mid 50s, he was pretty, he was unknown. He was an unknown young pianist. And he had a dream to perform. He accumulated some money and rented the Hollywood Bowl on an off night. He showed up in formal dress and on a grand piano, he played a full concert to an empty Hollywood Bowl. He acted as if he visualized it. Four years later, he performed there for a full house, standing room only. That's the power of acting as if. We act as if the dream was already a reality and continue towards the goal until it manifests. We're all here to make a difference to be the change that we seek. So I invite you to write down your goals. Focus on four areas, health, relationships, career, finances. Make a statement that expresses the dream in that area and speak it in the present tense. It is true in your mind now. And it becomes reality as time goes on. These statements need to be brief, positive, and specific. Create them for yourself and choose words that resonate within you and make them your own. Practice it. Go into a meditation. Commune with your divine self and come up with the affirmations. This is not just about repeating words. Emmett Fox says, parroting affirmations means we remain in a cage. They need to be stuffed with feeling. We need to feel it. We need to know it. We need to own it and feel it in our heart that that which we are desiring is already manifest. Our heart and our mind need to work together. Jesus in Matthew 5, 37 says, let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Now, what he's talking about here is what we in unity refer to denials and affirmations. Now, denials do not mean that we deny something that's happening. Denials mean we release whatever is in the way of having us reach our goals. If we're ill, we don't stick our head in the sand and say it's not there. We don't deny that we're, we're ill. 
We deny the power that it has over us. So this illness has no power over me. The Christ within can move through all things. Again, we deny the power that it has over us, which is a big difference than just parroting something. It may be a fact that we have an illness, but the illness doesn't have to be the truth because truth is, the truth is, is that we are whole and perfect at the core of our being. We can affirm that because it's true. We are whole and perfect at the core of our being. The fact that we are experiencing illness does not get in the way of that truth. In Alaska, during the rainy season, dirt roads become thick mud. Deep ruts are cut into them as vehicles travel back and forth. And soon after the rainy season, winter arrives and the deep grooves in those roads freeze solid. At the beginning of one of these long roads, there's a sign that reads, choose your rut carefully. You'll be in it for the next 50 miles. The same holds true for us. Each thought of sickness or health, hatred or love, poverty or prosperity cuts a very subtle neuropathway or groove in our brains. The most dominant thoughts cut the deepest grooves. Once a groove is cut, thoughts just automatically keep traveling in it. And some of these grooves have turned into deep ruts. Denials can get us out of the rut and affirmations can help us cut new grooves. With denials, we pull out the weeds and with affirmations, we plant the seeds. We can take a true idea and root it deeply in our minds and affirmations keep us focused on our goals, generate the action as we speak them. And then they change our world. So plant those seeds, pull out the roots of any old negative grooves that are there, plant the seeds. Our soil is fertile. Jesus in the gospel of Thomas said, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Now, prosperity author Catherine Ponder says it in a different way. She says, until you meet it with grace, it will be in your face. And I love that. So when something's coming up and it's in our face, it's there for us to look at. Until we bring forth these things that need to be healed, they will just keep coming up, popping up in various disguises and various forms right in our face. We have to get to the root of the problem. Pull the weed out, plant the new seeds. When we face these false beliefs, we can change them. Who's ever thought they had a thought that they were not worthy? Who's ever had a thought that they were not smart enough or bright enough or whatever? We all do this, but we can change those false beliefs. There's a Chinese proverb that says, you cannot prevent the, uh, the birds of sorrow from flying over your head, but you can prevent them from building a nest in your hair. None of us want nests in our hair. We have the power to change our lives and get out of those ruts. We are all here to make a difference. We are all here on the hero's journey. Bring forth those things within you. And as you do, you bless yourself and you bless this planet. Know that you are worthy. You have the, the divine presence within you. You are an expression, a beautiful, pure expression of God in the world. I'd like to close with a poem from Rumi. It says, you were born with potential. You were born with goodness and trust. You were born with ideals and dreams. 
You were born with greatness. You were born with wings. You were not meant for crawling, so don't. You have wings. Learn to use them and fly. And with that, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and get comfortable in your seats as we move into meditation. So just allow yourselves to take a deep breath and let it out. Allow yourselves to just relax with each breath you take. Feel the presence within you, that presence of spirit, that presence of the Christ, that expression of your true self. Just allow that presence to just permeate your entire being. You were born with wings. You were meant to fly. So I go within and I allow my divine self to speak to me, to guide me, to direct me in all that is mine to do. Yes, I have dreams, I have goals, I have a vision. And I allow myself to take that vision and run with it. I know the power and presence that is within me. I know that all that I do makes a difference. And I allow spirit to guide me as I move within and create denials and affirmations to support this vision, to support my soul's purpose, to support myself in seeing and knowing the truth that everything is of God. I am here to contribute. I am here to make a difference. And now I allow myself to move deeper and deeper into the silence. And I just listen. And now I invite you to hold in mind all those who are in need of prayer. We pray for anyone who has hatred in their heart, anger or unforgiveness. We pray for all those who have lost their lives and the families of those who are feeling the effects of the loss of a loved one. We hold in prayer the, the family of Polly Fox whose 
Mother Irene had made her transition on Friday. We hold in our hearts all those who are feeling any unrest and we pray for clarity and awareness and the elevation of consciousness for all of humankind. There is only one and we are that one. And now I invite you to bring your awareness back into your body, back into your room. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Are we all back? Well, welcome back. And then this is the time in our service where we have the opportunity to give. So I invite you to take your gifts in your hand or symbolize the, visualize the symbol um, of your gift, be it a check or a PayPal symbol. Um, you know, I use the Unity Spiritual Center website and the donate button, and then PayPal is my, my visualization. And we just allow ourselves the feeling, to feel that love that is us and the love with which we give. We do not give out of fear, we give out of joy. And we give with the knowledge of knowing that God is source and supply. And we are abundant beings of light, allowing all the good to come to us that God wants for us. So I invite you to bless these gifts with me. So if you would mute your mics and repeat this with me, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I choose to give, choose to give. all that I am open right. to receive, and I am grateful. Please remember to mute your mics. And now I would like to turn it over to our music team.